Narda Hadim Lukutanya Traveler. I think my first travels I did with my friends. Yeah. I wanted to go far away. Yeah. Studies, my degree, scholarship in France. Mm -hmm. And I lived there for a year, but then I wanted to go further yeah. and I went to Peru. Traveler. As a solo traveler, um, without knowing when I was going to come back or even where I was going to come back, to define our identity. Yeah. It gives me that space to. That's a good question. I learned to be with myself. Wow. Be creative because I have very regular jobs. Yeah. I've never done that. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money I have. Yeah. If I want to go somewhere, I go. Out of that idea that we cannot travel because we're women. More couch surfing than house sitting. I had been traveling for like eight years before. It's a beautiful journey. Wow. <laughs> Technology, yeah? Hi guys, I'm gonna. Yeah, Narda, I'm looking for Tanya. Tanya, مشغولة ومستعجلة فأنا عم لكم الانتروداكشن سريعا. Tanya تعرفت عليها في الفري دايفنج وواحدة من الهيروز ال يعني المستقبل بتاعها باهر وواحدة من أصحاب السفر وأنا حابة أقدمها لكم بشكل سريع. I will do the introduction another time. I'm just telling them. Wow, you speak so fast. Because you are you are in rush. He's like home. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, the guys are working. I told him I have a half an hour and he said, yeah, yeah no okay, rush. great. Don't worry. So, hi, Tanya, how are you? Hello. Thank Shai you. Mom. Thank you to, uh, for being here on my podcast. I'm, it's such an honor for me to have you today. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> okay. Can you introduce yourself to our friends who, uh, who are watching us? What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Yes, uh, hello everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Tania, Tania Panes. I'm 35 years old and I'm from Spain. I was born in Madrid. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we are uh, in Baja, California now. <laughs> yes. Okay. How did you start your journey as a traveler? Well, everything started... Um, I think my first travels I did with my friends, mm. um, my female friends in Spain, like little travels here and there. And then I felt a big urge to go far. Yeah. I wanted to go far away. Yeah. And when I finished my studies, my degree. Uh, what did you study? I studied art history. Uh huh. Beautiful degree. And yeah. uh, I had the chance actually to do a, an internship, like a scholarship in France. Mm -hmm. And I lived there for a year, but then I wanted to go further yeah. and I went to Peru. Oh, wow. I got another scholarship, so it was it was through my studies, yeah, through wow. my university, that I could start like traveling that far with scholarships. Yeah. And then when I finished my university, I was already in Peru, in Latin America, and I yeah. decided to stay backpacking. And I then I stayed two years backpacking in in South America. Yeah. So, your first trip as a solo traveler, uh, how old were you then? I was like twenty three. Twenty three. And what was the reason for traveling, like learning something or for your studies, as you said, um, actually, like a solo traveler? As a solo traveler, um, actually, it was for myself. Yeah. It was because I felt I wanted to have that feeling. Yeah. I wanted to just start traveling without knowing when I was going to come back or even where I was going to come back. Yeah. So I wanted to feel that inside of me. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> so... What inspired you to travel? Like it's just an urge inside you or there is an inspiration? Well, it was a big urge yeah. of mine. Um, I think I needed to get away yeah. f from the Tanya that I was, maybe. I think that when we travel, we have the chance to sort of reinvent or yeah. redefine our identity. Yeah. Because when we are back home, yeah. I am Tanya with these friends and Tanya studied this and your comfort zone. her mom is Rosa and her that you know like Tanya is Tanya in a box yeah, yeah. Uh, but if I get out of that context and I arrive in another country then I kind of can be what whoever I want yeah so it gives me that space to develop myself uh, from scratch mm. and and that is amazing yeah so how did you plan and choose your first destination well, I always wanted to go to South America because yeah. it was like, you know, South America. <laughs> uh, I watched a lot of movies when I was a kid. Yeah. I read a lot of novels. This is also another thing I started traveling because I read a lot of travelers. Yeah. And especially women travelers. Yeah. Wow. I started searching and I found a lot of adventures, women 
back in the 17th century, 18th century, like amazing women who did travel on her own. And I wow. was so inspired. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I studied Peru. Peru is an amazing country. Yeah. I, I traveled everywhere and I felt very attracted to that uh, history and that like mythology of, you know, yeah. like the Incas and all this Machu Picchu and da 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 and, oh, and wow. the Andes and all this culture. It got me. South America is it's in my heart forever. Wow. So uh, what helped you cope with being out of your comfort zone? Well, I think that's a good question. Mm. Um, I think it's something you train. Yeah. I, as I tell you, I first started with my friends. Yeah. Then I did my first, uh, uh, I, I went outside to live in another country, but it was in Europe. Yeah. So it was more like Spain. Yeah. But then I took a further step and I yeah. went out of Europe, but I was going with a university yeah. program. Wow. So I think it's like taking baby steps or yeah. not as Gradually, baby steps, yeah. but kind of don't go and do a massive trip of five months if you have never even gone out of your town. Yeah. And start mm. with something simple. So yeah. you go a weekend on your own to a city that is close to your house, mm. you know, and this is a way of coping with everything that will come up with yeah. feelings that will come up adversities yeah. challenges yeah. and then build it build it slowly right yeah. wow. uh, how did you prepare yourself financially which is very important question it is yeah so because i got scholarship yeah and in the year that i was in france i was also working yeah. so i was working on the weekends studying uh, in the week mm -hmm. so it was very intense but yeah. i wanted i needed you to enjoyed work. it I needed to work sure. to maintain myself as well. And yeah. I managed to save yeah. a little bit. So yeah. I had some savings, not much, but enough, you know, to yeah. be a little bit comfortable. And then I got money from that scholarship. So when I started backpacking after in Peru, after I finished my degree, yeah. I found myself like with around $10,000, yeah. which at the time, you know, I mean, it's a good amount of money yeah. and I would just got this uh, sort of mindset of, okay, I'm going to travel very cheap. Yeah. So I would do couch surfing, wow. woofing. I would, you know, talk to communities, do exchange. Then I started learning how to do jewelry and art crafts to sell on the street. Wow. I would go to marinas in the coast uh, to, to clean boats. Yeah. You know, wow. I would like do whatever I could to yeah. also make some money and not yeah. just use all of my savings so that yeah. I would always have some. So you keep your saving for emergency or just in case? Yeah. And but plane tickets and yeah. all these things but i will always try to do this and that and like you know try to make it happen and not spend too much that was the mindset at the time wow so inspiring yeah <laughs> i always say traveling gives us the best life adventure and valuable lessons so what was your biggest lesson life lesson from traveling i assume they are plenty but let's talk about the most important one well i think the most important one is that i learned to be with myself Wow. And I think that traveling on your own mm. will put you in that situation. Wow. You are with yourself. Yeah. You don't have friends. Yeah. So, you know, I would you go discovered alone yourself to, before discovering the other world. Yeah, I would go alone to a bar and just be with myself. Yeah. And then meet people. Yeah. And you're more open to meet people actually. I would yeah. make friends everywhere, you know, but I was like I was okay with myself. Yeah. And I was open yeah. to other cultures, to yeah. other people. I would trust people. You yeah. have to trust people when you're traveling. You, you have to know so? you have to know whom. Yeah. And I think you develop, especially as a woman, yeah. you have to be careful. You yeah. have to be alert. Yeah. And you have to be very in tune with your intuition. Yeah. But I learned I could feel energetically who I could trust, who I couldn't. Exactly. I was very also responsible with myself. Yeah. But I would as well trust people you know yeah. and people would trust me bringing me to their houses when i was doing couch surfing you yeah. know and it's uh, an exercise of trust with strangers as well yeah but so many beautiful memories and relationships came from that and yeah exactly. letting a stranger come to your house yeah. you know so i guess that was the most important to learn to be with myself and and open to the world so does it develop your personality or change a little bit of your mindset or a lot yeah, for sure, yeah. obviously, because you start and you're like this young, yeah. very young woman, you know, that is kind of still finding yourself. Yeah. I didn't really know myself that yeah. much, but still I had this impulse. And yeah. obviously through all these experiences and all these 
incredible yeah. like traveling alone just builds and you, you did, strong. deal too well with your emotion you managed it because it's yeah. difficult it's yeah. really difficult but so and you know deep. when i was traveling we don't i didn't have a smartphone yeah smartphones didn't exist yet yeah so i'm talking about yeah like more than 10 years ago so yeah. smartphones were kind of it was like the blue the blueberry yeah no, the blackberry yeah <laughs> blackberry kind of thing so when i was traveling i didn't even have a phone yeah I was I would go to the internet cafes and yeah. sometimes call. Yeah. You know, I have to go to Spain. Yeah. I would call my mom and you know, mom, I'm good. Dad, I'm fine. Or I would send an email. Yeah. But I wasn't connected. I I would print Google Maps directions or oh. I would go with Lonely Travel. Yeah. You know, like the guide. And I'm so happy that yeah. I traveled in those days yeah. because now it's impossible. Yeah. Now, if you don't have your phone, you're yeah. you, you can't. You're lost. It. It's like, <laughs> you cannot even go to the airport. <laughs> Once we wake up. <laughs> so I'm very glad because it, it gave me that opportunity to be very present and yeah. not be so connected to back home or other places. You're really where you are. Yeah. And you're not distracted or energetically connected to another geographical place. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Any tips for people who want to make money while traveling? Yeah, be creative. Wow. Be creative because uh, nowadays we can make money in so many different ways. How? And explain more because I always say that. Yeah. But they don't like they don't have this belief in themselves. I feel that you have to find your passion, whatever you're good at, whatever yeah. you can share with the world, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. And study a little bit of marketing, you know. Yeah. Study a bit of marketing, the basis of marketing. There's a lot of mini workshops and, and people who are putting a lot of valuable information out on YouTube or even like you pay like $20 and you get a, an amazing workshop of somebody that can teach you how to do your own workshop, you know. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities that you can share with people what you are good at and what they can learn with you. And you can monetize that. The important thing is how you spread the word, how you you market that to find your customers, you know, that that's one way, like doing things online. Another way, you know, it's like, there's a lot of like work away communities yeah. and uh, in some of them you can make a little bit of money. In others, they will give you like homing and exactly. food and, you know, so even volunteering like, or sharing. Yeah, you, or... Don't, you won't, exactly, yeah. you, won't ex you won't spend any money and yeah. you will learn something new, you know. Yeah, Ta talent or So there's yeah. many ways. Mm, I don't know, there's a lot of seasonal jobs, you know, like uh, you can go and I've been doing like fruit picking as well. Wow. I've been yes. doing a lot of seasonal jobs as well. I did that in France, you know, yeah. um, I was au pair. I've taught languages like yeah. there's so many things that you can do. Yeah. At least for like something that will sustain you. Yeah. And then I don't know, like maybe you have a project like yeah. Shaima has, you know, <laughs> and she she's a By traveling, you find out like new ideas at helps you to make money out of it totally yeah. totally and uh, be creative get out of the box yeah and th and you have to think that it's possible and see the ways mm. and, and make it happen make it happen you are the only one who can make it happen so work for it do you think learning a new language other than your tongue uh, language helped you oh yes absolutely imagine I mean, if you don't speak english <laughs> I, I was very lucky, you know, I was very privileged because yeah. my, my parents, um, they worked really hard so I could go to a, an English school. Yeah. And this in Spain, especially back in the days, it was not normal. Yeah. You know, and, and the school that I went for, uh, I went to was expensive. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my parents, they wanted that for their kids. They yeah. wanted us to speak English so we could have possibilities in, you know, like beyond what they had. And I will always be grateful for that, you know, but I was very lucky. I learned when I was t um, a, a little girl. Yeah. So obviously that made it easier for me. And I also got to learn a little bit of French yeah. in my school. Wow. But then I continued by myself so I could go to France and, yeah. and study there. So wow. I then learned French uh, a little bit later. And you used it. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I actually learned and it. It helped you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I learned a lot when I was there. Yeah. At the beginning, it wasn't easy, but then yeah. you get, and it's similar practicing. to Spanish. Yeah. So definitely speaking languages helped me traveling, and I probably could have not have traveled as I did with that yeah. confidence yeah. without that second you can language. Communicate better. English is, is essential. Yeah. But now there's so many ways you can learn, and yeah. for, free, for free, YouTube yeah. apps. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's essential, and it's fun.
yeah. and it helps you develop like i mean it's like so good for your brain <laughs> oh yes so it's yeah. go for it i would yeah. love to learn arabic oh it's very I mean, difficult even for me <laughs> spanish in spanish language mm, a lot of the words are arabic actually yeah. so i feel that the pronunciation and certain things it yeah. would be easy but it's not an easy language for sure but yeah it, it would be is. different letters yes okay amazing uh, does being bilingual or trilingual is it tri or trilingual okay. I'm, I feel I'm bilingual but with French I, I, I can yeah. speak but I'm not as fluent as in English yeah but I, I can but definitely you. Yeah. yeah so does being bilingual or more having more than one language help you find more work opportunities well yes 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 it did um, although honestly I've been kind of a very I never had like very regular jobs. Yeah. So I feel which is fun. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah. So I feel I never I wasn't like the type of person like building a curriculum, you know, yeah. or like asking for very regular jobs. But definitely it opened me to travel, yeah. to be confident. And this, you know, opened me in so many different uh situations in my life that yeah. led me to not just job wise, but yeah. life experience and, and you know, uh I was actually working as a street poet for a long time, oh. typing poems for people with a typewriter. And yeah, wow. I would, I know, I speak English, so I could type in English as well yeah. and in French, although yeah. there would be mistakes and stuff. Yeah. But this allowed me to improvise poems. There is in... no shame to speak. Even you no. try. No. You try to of speak course. different language. And I would tell them, look, I can, I can do it in French, but there are going to be some mistakes if that's okay for you. Yeah. And they would say, oh, it's fine. Yeah, but because for me, me, my English is not that much perfect, but I said, I'm going to do yeah. it. I'm going to do the podcast even in a different language. That's I'm good. not like, it, it's not easy for me, but I'm getting out of my comfort That's zone. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. So, do you have any tips for traveling on a budget? Um, honestly, I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much money I have yeah if I want to go somewhere I go oh. and then if I'm having any problem I will, move, I will so find a way plan your trip then but I think I've never put myself in that situation I think I've always had enough money to be kind of in the okay zone. yeah in the safe zone yeah um and I never plan trips like okay this is gonna cost this and that and that this is not like the kind of way that I travel mm. but I understand if you say okay I'm gonna go to Japan 20 days you need yeah. to you need to kind of Calculate organize it. yeah but me i would go to a place and i wouldn't even know where i was going to sleep that oh, day wow. sometimes so you know i was just for me it was the daily living and i was always making money somehow yeah so for me that's the key like i always make you money. trust you believe in yourself you, you're yeah. gonna make it and as i'm making money i can move to the next place you know oh, wow. and i was doing that with the poetry for example i would make money and then move to the next place did you face any difficulties any challenges while it's traveling yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's always challenges, right? I think that, yeah, as a woman sometimes, but honestly, not as much as people think. Yeah, exactly. I think that we have as well this, um, we have to get out of that idea that we cannot travel because we're women. Mm. That's not true. We can. Um, we just need to have uh, more awareness, yeah. more uh, intuition and... But we can totally, I've done it. I've traveled more than 50 countries. Mm. And many of them, it was on my own. Mm. And here I am. 50? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Some with my family, others with my friends, friends. and m many of them on my own. Yeah. And I've always managed to connect with beautiful people. Yeah. So I think it's like, you need to know certain things. And yeah. be, but challenges as well is... Uh, the language could be, but I was quite lucky because speaking English, speaking Spanish, it's yeah. quite okay to move around the world. Mm. But um, well, honestly, it's more like how you deal with yourself yeah. uh, than any anything else. <laughs> what have you enjoyed about doing house sitting while traveling? I know you are doing house oh, sitting. The house. Right there. Oh, so, I love it. I love yeah. having a nice kitchen. Can you explain more about the concept? Because they don't, yeah. they have no clue about or the, like it's a new concept in the middle is oh, yeah so can you explain more yeah, i mean i've done more couch surfing than house sitting couch surfing means you just go to someone's house and you yeah. stay with them yeah uh, and it's kind of a cultural exchange and you're with them and they yeah. maybe show you a little bit of the town and that. yeah 
But house sitting means that you go to someone's house while they are not there. Yeah. So you are in charge of taking care of that home. And that means a lot of trust from their yeah. their side. How right? does he trust you? What, what how um, and how do you meet with these people? There's um it's easy busy, but I just need there's to websites. Explain. Uh, yeah. There's websites that are precisely for this, that you yeah. create a profile and then you can connect with people who are in need of, of somebody to take care of their house. And for example, here in, in Mexico, where we are in La Ventana, it's, it's a very a popular concept it's here. It's a very popular concept here because there is a lot of people that come here in the winter to yeah. do kite surfing. Yeah. But then they leave back to, you know, especially the States and Canada. Um, and Europe or whatever. For or the summer. Yeah, yeah. Because here it's very hot. Yeah. And there's no wind and yeah. they want to be here because of the wind to do the kite surfing. Yeah. So they live for six months and mm. they don't want to leave their houses uh, alone because it's not safe. People can get in. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. it happened before. Um, so it can happen. So obviously, if there's somebody that they trust living and, and also taking care of the house, six months is a long time for living a house with no usage. Mm -hmm. So it's a very popular concept. So I don't pay, but I take care of the house. Yeah. And it's wonderful because it gives me the opportunity to stay in a wonderful place. Feeling comfortable. Feeling comfortable. And me that I've traveled so much, believe yeah. me, I appreciate a good kitchen. Yeah, I appreciate exactly. a good living room with a nice TV to yeah. watch a movie, a nice bedroom, a nice bathroom, yeah. a place of my own when you've and been it's traveling. For free. It's for free. Yeah. And yeah, it's so amazing. And it's a win win situation <laughs> for both sides. Yeah. Right? So I really recommend it. It's a beautiful and it allows you to stay in one place for a little bit longer. Yeah. Amazing. Last question. I would like to talk more about your uh, plans, your future. I know you are such an like ambitious person. <laughs> I know you have a lot of goals. You are working so hard on your physique, on uh, being like a free diver like reach like a certain point talk uh, talk to us about this uh it's, it's a beautiful journey um yeah i started free diving two years and a half ago yeah. and since i started i was like in love you got hooked completely hooked and um changed my life now i'm fully dedicated to free diving so while you are traveling you discovered your passion mm, actually I had been traveling for like eight years before. Yeah. And when I discovered free diving, I mean, I've been free diving since I'm a kid <laughs> because you're a kid. <laughs> okay, I went like, what about to fall? <laughs> oh, about to go free so diving. Like, and then we... <laughs> yes. Let's go free diving. Yes. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I was in the water since I'm a kid, but yeah. like free diving as a sport, I, I uh, sort of figure it out and and then I couldn't stop I was like I love this this is I found like my path I found what I wanted to do yeah and I I am an athlete now yeah I'm super you are dedicated. working so hard yes. on your physique I love it I do yeah. strength and conditioning training I do pool training I do depth uh, everything that's involved with free diving meditation visualization all she these inspire things inspire me a lot a lot a lot I just equalization like, yeah, equalize, frog yes <laughs> Yes, right. I always say the best friend we make is the um, well traveling. Yeah. And we met while we are traveling, kind of. Yeah. And we met uh, through free diving. So it was a good chance to like know someone amazing like you, such an, an inspiring person like you. <laughs> and I'm really, really, I'm so pleased to know you or oh, meet thank you. you really. thank you're you, amazing. Thank you you're for super being. inspiring as well. Thank you so I much mean... for being here today. I appreciate that. And really thank you for your time and thank your you. advices for our friends on social media. Okay. Thank you, you wanna, so much for listening. Would you like to say any like last advice for them? Um, yeah, just uh, go for it. Go for it. We only live once. And um, luckily now, especially as women, Mm. We're experiencing more freedom than yeah, ever. Exactly. And that's because our ancestors, you know, yeah. our grandmothers, our mothers, our, you know, they've uh, fought a lot that yeah. we can be here. Like I can be here. My grandmother could not travel. Yeah. She wasn't allowed to. Yeah. And I can. Yeah. So I value that a lot and value your freedom, value your your gifts and share it with the world. And 
if you don't want to travel, it's fine. Just yeah. do whatever is passionate for you, you know, and, and there's moments for everything. I really recommend traveling because it will teach you a lot. Yeah. Even if it's just once, you know, yeah. get out, go on your own, have some fun, see yourself in that situation and yeah. you will grow a lot. Yeah. And just do what you love in life. Thank you so much. <laughs> Salam, guys. Woo! Thank you. Shukran. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Let's have a photo together. Yes, let's do it. Yeah.